We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Ashu Garg, who's the CTO and co-founder of Bloomreach. Ashu, welcome to the studio. Thank you. So uh, Bloomreach launched uh, earlier this year, or came right. out of stealth mode. But let's talk a little bit about sort of how you came to the country and your experience in the Valley, because you've been here a while now. Absolutely. Um, so j walk us back when you were in India and studying in, in college. What were you working on? Uh, so I got my undergrad degree in electrical engineering from IIT Delhi in 97. And early days, during that time, I worked on my thesis project on gesture-based computer vision. So controlling the computer by using gestures. And then after working in Bangalore for a year, I moved to Urbana-Champaign, Illinois, to do a PhD in computer vision. How did you decide to come to the US? Uh, working in Bangalore, uh, got a lot of exposure to what was happening, and realized that the world is advancing at a very fast pace. And undergrad is a very, very basic degree, and it teaches you enough to be able to solve technical, hard technical problems. And I was really fascinated by all kind of things that were happening in the computer vision community, speech processing community, where you can look at images and identify objects. So I really wanted to deep dive into these spaces, and felt that really I want to do a PhD so as to learn all that stuff so that I can contribute in that space. And so when you were accepted in Urbana Champaign, huh? what, what were in your master's and PhD work, what were you focusing on? Uh, so my thesis was on learning in high dimensional spaces, which is really the theory of machine learning. In when you're building classifiers, I mean, you're working in high dimensional spaces, and how do you learn and generalize these classifiers? But at the same time, I focused a lot on applications. So during my PhD, I did four internships, uh, two with Compaq, where I focused on computer vision and bioinformatics, and then one at Microsoft Research, where I focused on understanding the user activity. And then another one where I uh, focused on another text stuff. And what I realized during these different internships is at the core, it's all same. It's the basic machine learning that you can apply to large data and do all kinds of interesting learning and learn patterns and objects. Uh, so did that. And then after those internships and that PhD, uh, I joined IBM Elmer Dunn. So how long were you in Urbana-Champaign? Around four and a half years. Four and a half years, and then you moved out to the valley. Then I moved out to the valley and joined IBM Elmer Dunn as a okay. research scientist. Okay. And I started focusing on the problem of identifying people on the web. Hmm. And it was early days, but one interesting thing that we realized is that when we think about people, and whether you are Samuel or I'm Ashu, who are we really? The name is very secondary. It is really our connections and our relations to other entities by which we are known. So I did a lot of work in that space. And what we were doing is that when people are searching for, let's say, Ashu Garg on web, what Ashu Garg they are referring to, the which person. And by looking at different content present on different pages, we can extract the relationship around this person and organize the pages by that information. And mm. around that time, I came in contact with Google. That sounds like a precursor to a lot of big companies now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. So uh, I came uh, uh, across some folks from Google. Okay. And they made a point that if you are doing search, why are you doing at IBM? Why not do at Google? Which kind of made sense. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> makes sense. Uh, so I moved to Google in 2004. Okay. And while at Google, then I worked on personalization collaborative filtering, built most of the infrastructure around that. Uh, did a lot of work in the space of search ranking, so was a part of the core ranking team, and also led the effort on Google product search when it got revived in 2007, and so worked on those problems. And one thing during that time I realized is that web has gone through a transformation. In 1998, web was very small. Uh, Google indexed roughly 26 million web pages. In 2008, Google published a blog saying that they know about a trillion pages. Wow. Now, so that is one part, interesting part of the story. Yeah. But there are two other things that happened. Second one was the number of ways in which people access the web changed. So they search Google, Yahoo, Bing, and some other search engines that people use to access the web. Alongside social networks came along, Facebook, and then Twitter, and now Pinterest that people are using to access the web. Yep. People are using email to access the web. Yep. People are using their phones, all kind of devices to access the web. Mm. And even more interestingly uh, is 
back in 98-96 we thought of web as a collection of documents. Each web page is a document and it is a collection of those documents. But what web has evolved into is a set of objects and relationships around them. Let's say you go to a retailer, they can carry products and their relationships which are defined by categories and other structures. You go to a travel website, flight, their flight paths and then their relationships between them that you can have these connecting flight paths and you can search around that. Yeah. So what that has made is web is very, very dynamic. And once you start thinking of it as that, organization becomes a key problem. How do you organize this web? How do you organize the content? I carry 1,000 products. How do I go about organizing those? I have these flight paths. How should I organize that stuff? And that is becoming a very, very hard problem. I mean, traditionally, it was solved editorially, manually. Like someone goes and sits and says that these are the top 20 categories I want. And, or these are the 1,000 categories I want. Can be done at the level of 20,000 and some number. But beyond that, it becomes extremely hard to scale. So as you were sort of on your way out at Google and thinking about this problem, like, and I'm, I'm guessing this yeah. is the formation of Bloomreach, your current right. company, what was it over the course of, let's say, studying from Urbana Champagne and um, IBM that gave you this core? Was it one thing that gave you the core insight, or was it the accumulation of that work? I would say two things, two key things. Yeah. One was the fundamentals in machine learning that I learned at IBM and Urbana Champagne. And second is exposure to data and user behavior at Google. So I knew good algorithms and I saw all this data and saw that these problems cannot only be solved by humans, but really it has to be a play between humans and machines. I see. So think of it as, either as an arts problem or a science problem, yeah. but it's really a combination of arts and science over here. Interesting. And so when you were ready to leave Google and, and start the company, was it something you knew you always wanted to do or were you a little bit hesitant or, you know, was it the right time? How, d how did you approach that? Uh, there is no perfect time or there every time is a perfect time to do a startup. Yeah. Uh, but is that something you always wanted to do? Uh, I always wanted to do one. Yeah. Uh, and even when I was at Urbana Champagne, I would always discuss with people like, oh, let's do this, a startup. Mm. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why I chose to come to the Valley. So I had offers both from IBM East, uh, West Coast, Almaden, and East Coast TJ Watson. And even though TJ Watson is a much bigger lab, I chose Almaden because I wanted to come to Valley and be exposed to all the startups and the activity over here. And then being at Google gave me all the tools and learning to do a startup. I see. Yeah. Got it. So that was the training ground. That the was training ground. Yeah. And so when, once you started the company, you and Raj uh, co-founded the company, well, um, how did you distill, you know, what, what technologies did you need to get together and build in order to start, start the company? And uh, how long was that process? It is a continuous process. Okay. Never ending. Sure, sure. Uh, and but to get it to a point where? So we did it in a very iterative fashion. Okay. So very first thing we did was we wanted to make sure that the mar there is a market for the problem that we want to solve. And we went out and talked to all the marketing people on the web. So we approached the CMOs of Fortune 500 companies, discussed right. with them the challenges they were facing, and we discussed with the marketing folks of small companies what are the challenges they are facing. Realized that, I mean, this problem, which we realized that the organization of the content is a very, very hard problem. Everyone is struggling with that. And while they are generating the content, they are still struggling with how to market it, how to make sure that this content is optimized for search, for ads, for display, for social networks and what kind of tools we can build. So talking to those people, we went through this exercise of we can build recommendation systems or we can build which will tell these people what to do or actually we can build more solutions where we can make use of the data and do things for them which can help them and they can also work with us in enabling those things. Uh, so we started out a small, search is the biggest channel, so we looked at where these people are getting the traffic from, what kind of traffic they are getting, and more importantly, what they are not getting, and what is lacking in their organization, which is because of which they are not able to get that traffic. And that was our very first product, Bloom Search. Hmm. So we think of this as a holistic problem, that if you have a website, you have traffic coming from multiple channels, 
uh, search is one channel, email is another channel, mobile is another channel, and so on. Yeah. And we are taking this problem one channel at a time. And you're looking at the intent in each channel, right? Intent in each channel. So actually think of it as a very seamless experience. Today when you go from one channel to the website, it's a very jarring experience. So you're on search, you search for waterproof digital camera, mm -hmm. and suppose a page about digital camera came as number one, you'll go to that page. And the experience is about digital camera, it's no longer about waterproof digital camera. So it's a very jarring experience. And what we expect over time, that this will become a very seamless experience. Uh, today on web, across channels, the bounce rate is very, very high. On a large number of people when come to a web, coming to a website, they just bounce back because they don't get what they are looking for. And that is a problem we want to solve over there. Make sure that people get the right content wherever they are accessing it, whichever channel they are accessing. And also using personalized, it to access. right? Whether and personalized, exactly. Right. Either based on who they are or where they are. Who they are, where they are, in what context they are coming from, what all they know about, like are they repeat users or not. Right. While making sure that it's not creepy, you're not violating any privacy. Right. Yeah. And so just a final question is like now that um, Bloomberg's come out, I know you guys are growing a lot. What, what, what's the current stage of the company and where do you see it going over the next, let's say, into 2013? Uh, things are looking extremely good. We are roughly 85 people, okay. mostly in engineering okay. and growing extremely fast. And while at one, on one hand we have come a long way, but I still feel like we are just still scratching the surface. The problem is enormous. The market opportunity is huge. And, and what game, do you game. see as like the CTO of the company? What do you see as like the top, you know, key technical challenges in over the next year to tackle? Uh, two big ones. Yeah. One is these are very hard problems to solve. So a lot of machine learning people, data people, who can come and solve these problems, mm -hmm. and large scale systems problem. Today we are handling more than 500 million requests a day, which is larger than most websites out there. Now building systems that can scale to that volume is very hard. And across, so we are serving data from multiple data centers. It's a SaaS platform. Yeah. So people who can build systems that can scale to this number. Understood. Yeah. Got it. Well, Ashu, congratulations on the success and sharing your story. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Sir.